Welcome to Ghoulish Gab. Always spooky, always under seven minutes. Today, we got a tough one. We're discussing our top three John Carpenter films. Uh, he recently had a birthday, and so that's how it kind of came up. Happy birthday, John Carpenter. Legendary producer, writer, composer. This is not easy to pick a top three. Also, I'm generally not a big, like, have a top list, make lists, rate things type of person. I don't know how you are with that. I love it. I'm a big make okay. list person. I mean, I, I can do it. I guess it's not something I just kind of do on my own unless I'm prompted to for some sort of thing. I enjoy it. I, it forces me to think about, like, I didn't realize how many John Carpenter films I'd watched or liked. Mm -hmm. And... And then I was looking through the list of them, and then it, yeah, it, it forces me to think about what my are my favorites and what I was kind of disappointed in. So there's so many, there's so many good ones, and it's so hard. But uh, we didn't discuss ours going into this, so I'm gonna go with my number three first, and that is Halloween. And I don't know that that movie needs to be discussed too much. I mean, it's it's a classic movie as a franchise. That's a whole another discussion. <laughs> But as a standalone film, this first movie is just freaking amazing. And I'll just let you go to your number three. I just love you. Like, it doesn't need to be discussed. I'm like, yeah, I'm sure a lot of people haven't seen it, like, sarcastically in my head. Right. My number three is Christine. Mm, okay. Which I don't think a lot of people know is because when I talked about it with Sean, he didn't even realize it was a Carpenter film. But you think Stephen King first. Exactly. Which, if uh, as we've discussed in past episodes of this, I'm a Stephen King freak. So even though other people are disappointed into in it, it has like a huge nostalgia value for me, and I love it. When's the last time you watched that? How does it hold up? It's been so it, long for me. It doesn't hold up <laughs> doesn't. at all. Uh, like with a lot of the conversations and the content. Like I said, it's pure nostalgia for why I love it. But even like. I watched it again like three years ago, and when I did, I was like, "Yee!" <laughs> but I still enjoyed watching it. Okay, that's fair. All right, now my number two is going to be Escape from New York, and this is probably not super expected. Okay, when you think about all these movies, this I do. I have a thing for post-apocalyptic type movies when they're done well. And this is probably one of the best. But this freaking cast, I mean, you got Kurt Russell, Donald Pleasance, Isaac Hayes, um, Adrian Barbeau, um, Ernest Borgnine, Tom Atkins, Harry Dean Stanton, Frank Doubleday. I mean, it's so stacked and the performances are so good. And uh, I can't leave it out of the top three. I just, I can't. So that was actually what we were discussing earlier. That was the movie that people have recommended to me so many times, and I have never seen it. Okay. I mean, it's... it's I know all, I Kurt know, Russell's it's, butt it's looks awesome. good in those jeans. <laughs> I'm sure, yeah. <laughs> what do you got but for number two? I've got The Thing. Okay. Because The Thing creeps me the fuck out to this day. Mm-hmm. The storyline, the, like, uneasy anxiety of not knowing who you can trust, combined with the actual practical effects that they put in there and the total isolation of everything, I think it's a, I think it's a damn near perfect movie. Oh, it absolutely. I mean, it, it is a masterpiece, honestly, and it, it holds up so well to today. Oh, yeah. It's really it's really hard to argue that. I mean, like I said, with these lists, it's just, uh, it just comes down to personal preference because there's too many good films. And you're probably not going to be surprised that my number one is They Live. They um, Live? My number one, too? Okay. It, it, I mean, it's an all-time favorite of mine. I mean, the themes of the, you know, the subliminal messages, you have to fit into the status quo, you know, just to, and then the supernatural alien aspect of it too. Um, plus, I mean, the performances at Roddy, Roddy Piper, surprisingly, you know, Keith David, um, they're both just great. And it's, it's the right amount of camp and just ridiculous shit all combined that it just, it works out so perfect for me. 
And as a wrestling fan, you got to love Rowdy Roddy Piper, obviously. He does a very good job, better than people expected. And I think this is one of these movies that people don't realize has been referenced in as much pop culture as it has. Like, it's a huge thing for so many people. Uh, there's that Banksy artwork that's based on it. Uh, Obey. That's based on, yep, Obey. And there's, I don't know the uh, how many people have heard the uh, kick ass and chew bubblegum and I'm all out of bubblegum quote. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But there's so many people that have referenced it because they're referencing other things and don't even, they've never even seen They Live. If you haven't seen They Live, you need to say, see They Live. You have to. My door just opened. It's a ghost. It's clearly a ghost, not my dog. But like, the, I mean, think of all the movies that you had to leave off this list, though. Um, the Fog, Vampires, oh, wow. Big Trouble in Little China, Prince of Darkness, uh, Mouth of Madness. Memoirs of an Invisible Man, Village of the Damned. Um, there's probably more that I'm not remembering. And you can put in the comments what your favorites are and what ones we didn't talk about and how crazy we are that Halloween uh, wasn't on I both know. our lists and that the thing wasn't on our top one for all of them. We are just about out of time. Comments, tell us what we're wrong about, as always, and we'll see you next time.